Jane Philpott, first of all, good to see you again. Thanks for coming in to speak with Happy me. To be here. Uh, you've asked the speaker to consider your question of privilege, um, challenging es essentially that the prime minister kicked you out of caucus uh, illegally because uh, there was not a recorded vote taken. Um, let me go back, and this is this is back in the fall of 2015 when this vote needed to have been taken to, to decide which procedure the caucus would follow. You were in that caucus meeting. Was there a vote? Well, as you know, uh, caucus meetings are confidential conversations, so I can't directly uh, tell you what took place, but it's been reported by other caucus members in the media, so I can can uh, give you the feedback that's been heard uh, from uh, what other caucus members have said, mm -hmm. was that uh, we did not follow the... Uh, approach that was uh, put in place under the Reform Act in 2015 by which every caucus was supposed to have four recorded right. votes uh, as to whether they would opt in or opt out to these particular mechanisms for deciding how caucus members could be expelled or readmitted. Uh, and so it's now on a matter of public record that those four recorded votes didn't happen in the Liberal caucus. All right. So what is it you want from the Speaker? Well. I I felt that I had an obligation to rise and make note of that fact and ask the speaker to investigate and determine whether in fact there had been a breach of my rights as a member of parliament, uh, the right to have due process take place uh, so that uh, if indeed I was expelled that it was done in a way that was according to the law. But why is that important now? I mean, why is it, so let's, let's say for the purpose of discussion, the speaker comes back and says, yeah, in fact, your rights were breached. Uh, do you want to go back to caucus? Well, I didn't say that in my statement, but I, it's again, it's a matter of principle. Uh, you know, and some have pointed out that even if there had been a secret ballot, that probably uh, the Liberal caucus would have voted to expel me anyways. That's not the point. The point is that the law is put in place so that caucus will have uh, the their rights respected mm -hmm. and will have rules that they are aware of as to how they um, may or may not be expelled from caucus. And uh, the leader should not, uh, if, if the leader is not given that authority by their caucus, they should not take the authority upon themselves to be able to unilaterally decide. But, but you're raising it because what? You, because because you, you, I know you say it's a principle uh, you know, in terms of the rule of law and, and right. following the rules of parliament, but others look at this and say this is, uh, this is another attempt to embarrass the prime minister, this is another attempt to embarrass your caucus colleagues, because at the end of the day, if you don't if you, if you believe that they were headed to expelling you anyway and that that was going to happen and there's a consensus for that, what does that, what does the, the whole idea of a vote matter now other than to keep the story alive and put more pressure on the government? Well, I think increasingly the, the conversation around uh, some of the events of recent weeks have uh, led to Canadians understanding more about the fact that members of parliament are in Ottawa here to represent our constituents and that the rights of those individual members of parliament need to be respected uh, and that yes we do form uh, caucuses and run um, for the most part with parties but that uh, party discipline has gone to the extent that uh, members of Parliament are not always given the rights that they should have to be able to speak for themselves independently and to represent their constituents appropriately. So I'm doing this not necessarily just on behalf of myself, but on behalf of future members of Parliament uh, who will need to know that a leader cannot unilaterally decide uh, to expel them. Fair enough. What's, what's the follow through? Let's go back to that. So that the Speaker says, yeah, your rights were, were, were breached. Do you want to well, go back I and do you want to go back to caucus and say you can't get rid of me? You know, I, I look forward to the Speaker's ruling and we'll have to wait and see uh, what he says. It was, it, it, in a sense, to make the point that laws are, are there to be followed. It doesn't matter who uh, put those laws in place or under which government, but if we are going to be a country that uh, is not ruled by arbitrary decisions, we need to follow laws that are put in right, place. Right, but I think this, the, the answer to this question is important. At the end of the day, is, will, you say, will you say, look, I wanted to make the point, and no, I don't want to go back to caucus, or will you say, I'm coming back to caucus because you didn't kick me out properly? Well, I think I will make that determination once I hear this. So I you're, don't not want, saying, no, I don't, you're not saying you don't want to go back to caucus? I don't want to make a comment until I've heard the ruling from the Speaker. Okay, so you're leaving open that possibility then? 
we'll decide uh, the next steps once we hear the ruling from the speaker. Okay, let me ask you about something else that's that's in the in the news now. Well, let me before I get to that. I mean, there are those looking at these developments and and wondering this question. Are, you know, are you and Jody Wilson Raybould working together to keep this story alive? It seems to fade a little bit. Then there's something else. And in, in the last couple of times, it's been your challenge in the House yesterday, your interview with McLean's. Uh, What's the answer to that question? Are, do you, have we heard everything we need to hear about this story, or are you working to keep it alive and keep it in front of Canadians? There is no master plan to keep the story alive, but the reality is that uh, when there is a potential breach of privilege, that I have a responsibility to speak up about that. There are certain rules around when that can be done, and mm -hmm. uh, I had an obligation to speak about it at uh, within a, a timely way, and so I felt it necessary to do that. Um, I am not attempting to keep any particular story alive when uh, media ask me questions. I try to be as fair as I possibly can in terms of being available to answer those questions. And certainly there is a lot of media interest, so uh, any uh, conversations that I may or may not have are because I need to speak the truth when I'm asked questions. On the wider question of the SNC-Lavalin affair and the ongoing questions of what happened here, are you satisfied we've heard everything we need to hear as Canadians about what actually happened in this story? Is it done as far as you're concerned? Well, I, I think I have given this answer in other settings to say that I do have uh, further pieces of information that potentially would uh, uh, augment the story and perhaps uh, affirm some of the the details that are there. I don't have uh, my my confidentiality uh, mm -hmm. privileges waived in a way that I can share. But those do you have pieces. information that would substantially change this and have Canadians go, wait a minute? Uh, what I have said is that I think Canadians have enough information on the public record through the materials that have been presented to the Justice Committee and through other formats that they can see the evidence that is there. And this is a very uh, serious and important matter for Canadians is that the independence of our justice system is one of the fundamental pillars of our democracy and the evidence that's been presented to the Justice Committee, I believe, points to the fact uh, that there were attempts to interfere with the independence of a criminal trial. Which brings me to this question. What's your view of the Prime Minister threatening legal action against Mr. Scheer um, for uh, Andrew Scheer's comments accusing the Prime Minister of political interference, lying to Canadians and corrupt conduct? Do you share Mr. Scheer's assessment of what happened here and the actions of the Prime Minister's behaviour in his statements, or do you think that's over the top? That is a matter for uh, the legal opinions of uh, both Mr. Shear and Mr. Trudeau, and I don't uh, have any desire to intervene on that. All right. So in, in, in his actions in this case, uh, let me ask you, um, do you think the Prime Minister's lied? Uh, I don't want to comment on that, sorry. Do you think he's uh, had any corrupt conduct? There... We've talked about this question before, and I think the former Attorney General spoke in the Justice Committee and, and, and indicated, of course, that there's no evidence of any laws being broken. But my answer when I've been asked about that before has been the fact that Canadians expect us as Member of Parliament to hold the highest possible ethical standards uh, for our conduct. Uh, to uphold fundamental principles like the independence of the justice system. So. Um, as I say, there's no evidence of laws being broken, but we actually have to hold ourselves to something even higher than that uh, to be able to uphold these fundamental principles by which democracy uh, depends. And that means make, knowing that politicians, political staff, political officials do not interfere with criminal trials and with the justice system. Let's finish on this and look ahead. Um, your writing, most members of your writing association resigned. Um, said they just uh, they were working for you essentially and they don't want to go through the whole process again with a different candidate in the riding. Um, have you decided whether you'll, you won't be as a liberal, but have you decided yet uh, whether you'll run as an independent or have you been approached by other parties? Uh, I have not made a final decision yet. I have been approached by uh, people from other parties and uh, I am currently uh, in discussions with my family and with the uh, people in my riding, the people of Markham Stovell, to get advice. I'm hearing lots of advice from people about whether I should run again, and I hope to make a decision in the coming weeks. All right, Jane Philpott, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me.